Have you ever heard a sermon so bad, so filled with eisegesis that it actually left you speechless? Well, that's exactly what we have here with Stephen Furby. You ever had morning sickness for something God was doing in your life? Because maybe I was standing over the toilet feeling like I was carrying something, but I'm scared of something, but I'm carrying something, but I'm scared of something. Let's talk about it here on All Things Theology. Who might be you? All things theology, all things theology, we chop it up properly without an apology. Gotta get that theology to God, hollow because this is how we do it at all things theology. Yo, grace and peace, and welcome back to an episode of All Things Theology, where this is your host K Dub, and today we're going to talk about Stephen Furtick. Boy, is this sermon something? else i mean <laughs> you're gonna you're gonna you're not gonna know if we're talking about the incarnation there's been a lot of bad christmas eve sermons about the incarnation and somehow some way that you know these pastors always take the birth of christ about something about their life you know it's just amazing how pastors you know can uh, read the bible and just find them in every passage it's almost like you know they're being prophesied who, who who's really god and who's really who's really you know the messiah you know it makes you ask those kind of questions so we're going to get into it so hold on to your hats and your heresy for this one and god will show up but how will he show up small small you will find a babe wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger big enough to save the world small enough to fit in a cradle. This is the juxtaposition of Jesus. In the book of Zechariah chapter 4 verse 10, the prophet says, despise not the day of small beginnings. Now, there's a lot of truth in what he's saying so far. You know, God didn't come down, you know, as a king, right, waving the glory and majesty and all that, right? You know, he came very humbly, right? Very small, right? You know, not how we would picture it. Matter of fact, not how the Jews thought he was going to come. Right. And so they'll false teachers, you know, me centric preachers will start off saying a lot of things. But you kind of can see where it's about to turn the tide uh, where he's, you know, despise not little beginnings right imagine how it imagine if where would you go if you was a if you was a heretic right if you, you just know where it's going to go after you hear something like this hold on and this christmas you have to understand that some of the things that god gives you in your life are under wraps right now so let's try to make some comparison to right christ having little beginnings versus you having little beginnings. I, well, one, one, again, it's not even comparable. I mean, he was prophesied to come. Uh, it was his plan. Uh, you, you know, there's so many things that are not parallel, right? You know, he's trying to make some parallel. Him wrapped wrapped in a swaddle, right? Your plan's being wrapped. You, you see the imagery he's trying to create around this, but it's going to get a lot worse. They're big, but they're in a little package. And the fact that Jesus came as a baby lets us know that there is a development process to everything that God does in your life. So you pray for something and get frustrated because what God gave you doesn't match what you asked for. The fact that he came as a baby lets me know that there is a part of God that I must grow into. I feel so. There's a part of God you must grow into. I, 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 I don't even know what that means, but there's nothing about this big big uh plan big you know mission or vision i have that's in a little package it's, you know again i don't know where any of this is coming from it's, it's again it's being allegorized off of the birth of christ you know it'd be great if he had a didactic text he was teaching from it's like okay maybe maybe i could see something like that but this is all just kind of trying to make some parallel about christ you, you know there's a reason why the bible calls jesus the unique one he's the uh unique son of god there's you know there's in some sense there's no one like him all right. And so trying to make these parallels on things that are very unique to Jesus Christ alone is actually where I think we're going to find ourselves in a lot of trouble like Stephen Furtick here. But don't worry, he's going to give us worse. I wanted to preach this to somebody who has been frustrated. You have been frustrated because you have been comparing your starting place to somebody else's finished product. But God says, if you look for me, you'll find me as a baby. Just a small thing. Just a small prayer. Holly, the other day, one of the men I met at the wrestling match said. So uh, 
put pause real quick because now he's about to go into story time, right? We got to get a parallel. He's going to give a parallel of what this looks like. And of course, there's no better example to use in a sermon than Stephen Furtick, right? So watch this. I got a question to ask you. Elevation Church, right? I said, Zach could go either way. He could say, he said, did y'all used to meet in a basement? He said, how long did you meet there? I said, not long, but it was the longest six weeks of my life. I used to go in the bathroom in the basement of the Matthews Community Center, and I would stand over the toilet because every week I felt like I would throw up because I was pregnant. <laughs> boy, ain't no way, boy. Boy, ain't no way, boy. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? Now, I know it's 2023, and you got a lot of people believe you can get pregnant. You know, obviously, he's trying to make a metaphor. He was pregnant with a message, right? He's pregnant with a mission, right? And so, he's trying to make some parallel between, I think he's trying to make some parallel between Mary and, actually, he's going to say that in a bit, but guys, slap me if I ever use the word saying I'm pregnant with something, <laughs> right? My goodness. What? Yeah, yeah, we got to say that again. Bro, what are you talking about, man? I don't want to be pregnant. I can't. You ever had morning sickness for something God was doing in your life? No. No offense, I know it's just a metaphor, but I felt like that. I felt like I was carrying something big. Oh, he needs God. some milk. That's what he needed for that stomach pain he says he had. Maybe that's why I wanted to preach about Mary. Because maybe I was standing over the toilet feeling like I was carrying something, but I'm scared of something, but I'm carrying something, but I'm scared of something. And in that juxtaposition, are you there right now? No, 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 no. This is where I am right now. Jingle bells, jingle bells. I'm not going to hell. You know what I'm saying? Papa Sam! Yeah, yeah, his man is out of there. You know, he makes he makes me want to ask the question, you know? Hey, who mans is this? Oh, who mans is so this? So, he feeling like he's on the toilet. He's carrying something. That's because he's staring at something. He's blaring at something. <laughs> he daring at something. <laughs> well, I don't even know what's going on right now, but this is supposed to be some kind of parallel. His morning sickness, right? Feeling like he's going to throw up before a, a, a sermon is supposed to be comparable to Mary's birth. Well, now, we've already heard bad sermons about the, uh, the birthing something, right? We just heard Mike Todd just a few days ago. Go check that out if you haven't. You know, he's, he's supposed to be this parallel between Mary birthing the Son of God. Guys, stop trying to compare your life pain <laughs> with the birth that, you know, with, with birth pains. Like, what? All women should be offended that hey, he's comparing his his uh, antics of going to preach stuff like this, by the way, comparable to their, uh, you know, what they're going through in birth. Uh, not the same. All women should file a complaint in a lawsuit on this man. You know God has given you a word. You know God has called you to do something. You know God has made you a promise. You know he reached out and saved you. You know he's given you a testimony. You know he brought you out of a miry pit. You know he set your feet on the rock. But side note, I don't know how these guys do not like have a seizure. I mean, just I mean they gotta have like amazing air capacity. I guess I'll give that to them. That basement behind a closed door of a bathroom stall. I was privately petrified. Yeah. And I didn't think it'd be good if I threw up in front of my team. I didn't think that would be a good look for leadership. And yet, somehow, from that basement now, I'm preaching about a barn in Bethlehem and a basement in Matthews. But I'm really preaching about the low place in your life today. But I'm really preaching about the low place in your life today. Yeah, so he 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 spills the beans. He he throws up. He vomits, right? Due to all that pregnancy, I guess, morning sickness. He really tells us what the sermon is about. You know, so he admits to what I'm saying. Now he's using this this incarnation story to really preach about what he wants to preach, and that's you and the low points in your life. <laughs> this is what I'm saying. These guys will do anything to preach. You know, use any text becomes a a sermon to preach what they really want. You know, you know, the, you you have this a lot with the Joel Osteen's, right? They'll they'll start off reading a verse, and by the time you get to 
you're like, what did that have to do with the Bible verse? You know, that's why I tell you guys, read the Bible, read, listen to a sermon. The best way you can listen to a sermon is with the Bible open, you know, whatever it is, the small beginning in your life today, because God said, not only will I reach you, I will wrap you. Think about Jesus. Come on, let's consider it before we get real cute with it and put money on our credit cards to tell Jesus happy birthday. By the way, that's not what this season is about. It is about the incarnation, not about your gifts, not about Santa, not about the reindeer and Rudolph and all that garbage. Throw that out. This season is particularly around the time. I'm not claiming a specific date. It's around the seasonal time where Jesus was born, God in flesh. And that's what we should be celebrating. Now, obviously, we should be doing that all year long. But right. I think this time kind of brings around, brings about the cultural uh, uh memory of that which i i don't think that's a bad thing but um yeah very very interesting that <laughs> you should have been preaching jesus in the first place but we really know what you really want to preach before we go into debt to show the lord how much we appreciate all he's done for us before we get into all that chaos let's take a moment and consider the christ a babe born in a manger laid in a manger. Why? Give me Luke 2 7. Because there was no room for him in the end. He was rejected. The Savior came and he was rejected. He was rejected because they had no room. And so now I wonder am I talking about Jesus or am I talking about you? <laughs> what? What? Out of her life. Out of her life. Wait a minute. Are you? No, 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 no. Like, you know, you're getting rejected because they don't have any room. And, and now I'm, I'm wondering if we're talking about Jesus or we're talking about you. You're confused. You're confused on the perfect, sinless son of God who died and gave himself as a ransom for the many versus little old us. See, this is what I say with these word of faith, prosperity, me centric preachers. They bring God so low. And they elevate us so high to the point you can't even tell the difference between God and, and, and the creation. That's exactly the problem I've been speaking on. Many of you have been speaking on. I can't believe he admitted to that. I mean, I was like, wow, that's exactly what I'm talking about. Because maybe you've been rejected, not by a person, but maybe your dream has been rejected or denied or delayed or deferred this year. And in that place of rejection where you could not find room for yourself, could not feel at home in your emotions, could not see a solution through your Red Sea, could not see a way through your storm, could not find Like, it just goes on and it's just find these things about me, me. Notice, it's me, me, me. He's, he's, he's trying to be a singer. Me, 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 me. Right. <laughs> it's just all about Stephen Furtick, all about his little... His, his people trying to make some parallel for them. And, and don't get me wrong. There is much application, which is for us. But we have to start with the divine. See, that's why I like the book of Ephesians. It starts us so high, right? Who we are in Christ because of what Christ did on our behalf. Then there's application. Hey, husbands love your wives, right? <laughs> you know, but we got to get at the, the, uh, the why first. And the why is because of Christ. His life, death, burial, resurrection, right? And so... Uh, you know, but there are some texts that are not meant to be parallels. You know, the birth of Christ has nothing to do with the birthing of our, our vision, the, the morning sickness of Mary, right? That's, don't make that a sermon title. Please stop it. I mean, my goodness, I'm, I'm so sick of these sermons that are just so me centry. Give us Christ, right? As, 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 uh, who was it? Steve Lawson, give us some men who know the truth, you know? And so, Hopefully this was helpful just to see, you know, sometimes I expose you to guys to these things so that when you see it, you'll you'll know, OK, this is this is what Cato's been talking about. Right. This is how I can recognize a me centric sermon versus a theocentric sermon. Right. And so hopefully this was helpful for you till the next time. Y'all grace and peace. Yo, grace and peace. Thank you for watching another episode of All Things Theology. If you enjoyed what you heard today, go on and give me a like. Subscribe to the channel. Hit that notification bell. I promise to give you weekly lives, videos, interactions, exposing false teachers, sharing with you, the viewer, my theological beliefs, things about the culture and the Bible. So if you're here for that, come on and join us.
Also, if you would like to support this channel financially, you can do so by becoming a Patreon member or a YouTube member. Links are in the description below. You can see content before it drops. You can also have Q&A sessions with also other Patreon members, YouTube members as well. So if you would like that, hit the description link in below.